let's talk about talking to AI. Before we introduce overly complex terminologies and approaches, the rule is super simple. If you can precisely explain what you want, your chances of getting what you want increase. That's the main thing to know and you'll get 80% of the job done. The remaining 20% varies for every task and every LLM. And that's where the techniques we will discuss now will come in handy. So here are the best tips to remember when prompting an LLM what works well and what doesn't. Just to set a common baseline, we'll define a prompt as the input we provide to an LLM to tell it what we want. It's often phrased as a question, a task description, or a set of examples and instructions. Think of it as the interface between human intent and machine output. There's an old principle in computing, garbage in, garbage out. If you feed poorly constructed prompt, you will likely get a poor answer. Prompt engineering has now become a standalone job title in some cases, but more broadly, it's more of a new valuable skill, much like knowing how to Google or use a spreadsheet. You don't need a PhD in machine learning, just practice and use common sense. Whether building products with LLMs or using them in everyday applications, refining your prompting skills will pay off across many roles. The precise prompting techniques will change, but at the core, the skill is simply developing an intuition for using, instructing, and interacting with LLMs with natural language to get the most productive outputs and benefit from the technology. While some forms of prompt engineering are relatively brittle hacks that people have found to get desired results from the model, the broader discipline is simply effective communication with LLMs, which can be relatively similar to effective communication with humans. In particular, it often requires giving clear and concise instructions to what you can think of as a relatively novice assistant or intern, where you preemptively think through ways they may make mistakes or get off track. In practice, you cannot second guess all of these potential mistakes. There will still be new edge cases where your prompt isn't followed. This is why prompting is an iterative process where you test and improve your prompt over time. Either in the same ongoing discussion or retrying with some edits in the original prompt. Getting the best output requires evaluation of results across a wide range of potential use case scenarios. This is where patience will be your good friend. In this video, we will only provide an overview of the most popular and valuable prompting techniques, but I highly recommend checking the resource Learn Prompting, where we were early contributors to the materials for a more in-depth understanding. First of all, you may wonder why learn how to prompt since I already know how to communicate my intent. It's simple, because your intent and the AI's understanding of your intent is slightly different and it makes a huge difference in how well an AI responds to you. If you know how to craft a solid prompt, you'll guide the AI to give you way better answers and save tons of time and costs. The way you phrase things, the details you include, and the structure of your request all play a role in getting the best possible response. Plus, different AI models have different quirks. Some are chatty, some are straight to the point, and some follow instructions better than others. Knowing these differences helps you tweak your prompts to get exactly what you need. At the end of the day, prompting is how you get an AI to do what you actually want. One of the simplest ways to prompt an LLM is just to ask. This is called zero-shot prompting. You don't give it any examples or extra instructions. Just throw your request at it and see what happens. LLMs have gotten pretty good at handling a lot of tasks right out of the box. If you ask it to summarize a paragraph, you might just say summarize the following text and paste in whatever you want to summarize. If you need a quick translation, you could say something like translate the sentence I am learning how to code in Spanish and it will work. Sometimes that's all it takes. No setup, no context, just a straight request. But other times the AI spits out nonsense, which is why there are more structured ways to prompt like few shot prompting. Providing a few examples of tasks and responses can make a big difference. This is called in-context learning or few-shot prompting, as I just said. By seeing some sample inputs and outputs, the AI picks up on patterns and applies them to similar tasks. This helps with both accuracy and keeping a consistent style. 
For example, if you want the LLM to summarize novels in a single sentence, you can give it a few examples first, like these, and then ask the AI to do the same for Frankenstein, for example. So the LLM might respond with something like this. That's way better than just saying summarize Frankenstein because now the AI understands the format and tone you are looking for. You are essentially teaching it how to think by example on the fly. This idea isn't new. A breakthrough paper called Language Models or Few Shot Learners that used GPT-3 a few years ago showed how modern AI can perform all kinds of language tasks just by seeing a few examples something that used to require massive amounts of training data for each specific task. For current LLMs, few shot learning is common, but back then this was a game changer. And it still is a game changer. I always try this first when tackling a new task. But few shot learning also has its limits, especially for complex tasks. That's where more advanced techniques like chain of thought prompting come in, helping the AI think through problems step by step. This is needed because LLMs have a habit to jump straight to the answer, sometimes skipping important reasoning steps. You don't want to directly answer a complex mathematical equation or a brain-wrecking riddle. You take time and decompose them in multiple steps. Chain of thought prompting encourages the model to do exactly that and slow down to explain its thinking process before giving a final answer. It's like making the model think out loud. Sometimes it's just as simple as saying, let's think step by step. And the model breaks a problem into smaller logical steps instead of rushing to a conclusion. You will see the benefit of this technique primarily for logical reasoning questions, like if a farmer has 48 apples, sells 20, and divides the rest equal into four baskets, how many apples are in each basket? If the model tries to solve this in one go, it will probably make a mistake. But if you guide it by saying, let's think this through step by step, it will likely respond with something like 48 minus 20 leaves 28, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. With that breakdown, the final answer, 7, is much more reliable. That said, chain of thought prompting doesn't always work perfectly. Its effectiveness depends on the model and the task. It's particularly useful for arithmetic, logic, and symbolic reasoning, but doesn't always help with other types of problems. You are probably thinking that there is a limitation for every benefit, but that's a great thing because now you can directly use the technique that works for your task category, reducing the trial and error. These techniques will likely be less and less necessary as LLMs evolve, but they still help in improving results. New techniques will surface to improve results and we'll be sure to cover them on the channel and our course. Nowadays, reasoning models like OpenAI's O1 and DeepSeek's R1 do this chain of thought-like reasoning automatically with the goal of spending more tokens for more complex queries and fewer on easier ones, just like we spend more brain power when answering a complicated question. Another technique that helps is role prompting. Sometimes AI needs a little role play to get into the right mindset. For example, if you ask you are a physics teacher, explain Newton's laws of motion in simple terms, the AI will take on the role of a patient instructor and break things down clearly. But if you say you are a stand-up comedian, explain Newton's laws of motion, you'll get a much more humorous take. The core information stays the same, but the tone and framing change depending on the role you assign. This approach works across different fields because it gives the LLM an implicit set of rules to follow. It's kind of like how you naturally adjust the way you talk depending on whether you are speaking to your boss or your pet, well, hopefully. Newer models like OpenAI's O1 are designed differently from traditional chatbots. Instead of relying on tricks like role prompting or chain of thought prompting, you don't have to guide them step by step like an intern. You can treat them more like intermediate or even expert analysts, with some intern-like drawbacks from time to time to keep in mind. The key to getting the best results with them is providing detailed, structured context upfront. Instead of going back and forth refining a vague prompt, it's much better to start with a well-thought-out brief 
that includes all relevant information, such as database schemas, past attempts, or specifics about how you want the response formatted. The focus for these models should be on giving it all the details it needs upfront, allowing it to generate a well-reasoned answer without extra guidance. This approach helps O1 generate complex code, structured analysis, or technical explanations in one go. While it's powerful in these areas, it's not the best choice for creative tasks like writing a haiku where traditional LLMs handle those faster and cheaper. There's also something called system prompts. They are additional and sometimes hidden instructions that shape how a model behaves throughout a conversation. Unlike user prompts, which are provided during an interaction, system prompts are set at the beginning and establish general guidelines for the model's responses. They define the model's tone, ensure consistency, enforce ethical rules, and guide how information is structured. For example, in a news summarization tool, a system prompt might instruct the model to always format its responses as a bulleted list. Similarly, OpenAI's DALI uses system prompts to refine image generation. If you ask for an image of an AI robot, the model will automatically expand on that request to ensure the generated image aligns with ethical standards and provides a clear structured result. Not all system prompts are visible or editable by users. When chatting with GPT-40 through ChatGPT, the model operates under an unseen system prompt that influences its behavior, and users cannot modify it. However, when interacting with GPT-40 programmatically via an API, developers can provide their own system prompt to customize how the model responds, tailoring its behavior to specific needs or applications. All these techniques are a great starting point, but if you think using these techniques means you will get the perfect output on the first go, you will be disappointed. Coming up with the perfect prompt on the first try doesn't always happen. A lot of the time, it takes a few attempts. This is where an iterative approach comes in. You start with a prompt, see what the model gives you, tweak it, and try again. It's a back and forth process where you gradually fine tune your request to get exactly what you need. Even experts don't get it the first time. They test, experiment, and refine. Say you ask, tell me about the French Revolution. The LLM might give you a long detailed response when all you really wanted was a quick summary. You could refine your request with give me three key facts about the French Revolution. If the answer is still too formal or lengthy, you might tweak it further, like now explain these facts in one casual paragraph. By making these small adjustments, you shape the AI's response to match your expectations. A good workflow is to draft a prompt, test it, review the output, tweak the wording, and repeat until you get what you want. Each iteration brings you closer to the ideal response. An imperfect answer isn't a failure, it's just feedback. If the LLM didn't interpret your request the way you intended, rephrase it, or add more details and try again. At the end of the day, writing good prompts comes down to being clear and precise. The more specific the instructions, the better the results. If a prompt isn't working, refining it quickly is key. A good approach is to anticipate how the AI might misinterpret the request, test prompts under different conditions, and avoid making assumptions about what the model understands. Simplicity also helps. Prompts should be straightforward without unnecessary complexity. It's important to balance general cases with edge cases, thinking about how the prompt will perform in real-world scenarios. One thing that we always need to keep in mind is that LLMs sometimes make things up. The hallucinations, which happen when the model confidently spits out wrong or misleading information. The most common case is factual errors, like claiming New York is the capital of the United States. Another issue comes from the outdated training data. If you ask about the 47th president of the United States, but the model was last trained before the election, it won't have the latest information and might guess instead. Sometimes hallucinations happen because of the way we phrase a prompt. If we ask an LLM to confirm something that isn't true or feed it incomplete information, it might take that as a fact and build on it. Unfortunately, hallucinations aren't fully solvable because of how LLMs work. 
They generate responses based on patterns, not direct access to a real-time knowledge base. That's why it's always a good idea to double-check important information yourself, especially for anything factual or high stakes. Although now there's a fix for this, you can ask the LLM to provide sources by enabling web search where available. ChatGPT, for example, only cites sources when browsing is turned on. If the chatbot you are using doesn't have web access, it won't be able to fetch real-time references, so relying on it for citation without verification isn't the best idea. When accuracy matters, take LLM responses with a grain of salt and cross-check with trusted sources. In the end, getting good results from an LLM is an ongoing process of refinement. Clarity, context, and specificity makes all the difference. A vague prompt can lead to irrelevant or even incorrect answers, while a well-structured one gives the LLM a clear path to follow. Since such an advanced language model doesn't come with a user manual tailored to every request, your prompt acts as that manual. Think of prompt engineering as learning a new way to communicate, one that bridges human intent with machine understanding. It doesn't take technical expertise, just practice and a willingness to experiment. Also, as a final note, remember that different models respond differently. So prompt optimization isn't a one-size-fits-all. Reasoning models like O1 requires a distinct approach, while traditional LLMs benefit from more structured prompting techniques that we discussed. I hope this video was somewhat useful to you and that you better understand how prompting typically works. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.